Hi everyone and welcome to video number three on the American West and this one ladies and gentlemen we're looking at the Plains Indians still and the video will be divided into two sections the first half we will look at the beliefs of the Plains Indians and the second part the second half we will look at how the Plains Indians managed to survive on the Great Plains now first of all we're looking at beliefs well in America the white Americans the settlers they tended to be Christian they all believed in their God and in a way the Plains Indians had a similar belief but instead of the Christian God for the Plains Indians it was the Great Spirit for example the Sioux Nation the Sioux tribe they thought that their great spirit was called Wacken Tanka. So there we see a similarity between the settlers and the Plains Indians. But there were many differences in their different beliefs. And it was these differences, ladies and gentlemen, which as we will see over the next few videos, which led to conflict. Okay. So it's important that we try to work out what the main beliefs of the Plains Indians were. Luckily for us, we can divide it into three simple sections. First one, beliefs about nature. Anyone know that fantastic song? And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Apologies for the terrible singing. But the Plains Indians had beliefs about nature. They thought that everything had a spirit and these spirits could help the humans, help them. It was all about cooperating and working with nature, working with this wonderful world. For the Plains Indians, the idea that they could somehow control or rule nature, that was alien to them. In their tribes, in their bands, they would have people, sometimes referred to as the medicine men, whose job it was to contact the spirits, either through dreams or visions or dances. There's some very famous dances in the American uh, Plains Indians tribes. For example, the very famous sun dance, also the buffalo dance. They also had a belief, which was going to be very, very troublesome later on, that if they wore a certain shirt that they called the ghost shirt, then they thought they would be protected against bullets. Well, they learned, sadly, a very hard lesson there, ladies and gentlemen, in the future. So for the Plains Indians, they would work with nature, working together, ladies and gentlemen. That could cause potentially some conflict. Because when the settlers might begin to start living on the Great Plains, they had a different approach. They thought that it was their role to dominate nature and make nature work for them. Two separate beliefs which might cause conflict. So that's the first one, nature. The second one, linked in a way, is what did the Plains Indians believe about land well here we're really getting down to the nitty-gritty again for the plains indians land was seen as sacred a gift if you like from their great spirit some particular places normally higher ground extremely sacred for the sioux tribes the sioux nation it was the black hills of dakota well, later on, we will find that gold was discovered in the Black Hills of Dakota. General Custer was in the Black Hills of Dakota. Conflict again, as we will see. The Plains Indians, they had one key idea, one key belief about the land. And it was this. Land could not be owned. Of course not. It was a gift from the spirit. Therefore, land should be shared. That was their main 
driving force. Land could not be bought or sold or fenced off or claimed. Can you see that there might be here some quite severe conflict if the settlers are arriving saying this is now my land I'm going to put a fence around it keep off this is my land to the Plains Indians they say what are you doing the land isn't yours it's not even ours it's the great spirits conflict potential writ large ladies and gentlemen their third key belief is all about their attitudes to war. Now, we've already seen in some of the previous videos, the most important force for the tribe was the tribe's survival. So yes, the tribe or the band would raid each other for important things like horses, food, weapons. They would also raid sometimes to show their bravery. But they didn't particularly want to kill young men young warriors for no real reason because that would threaten the survival of all tribes so therefore they had their own particular ideas about the attitudes to war attitudes to conflict number one only attack only raid if you have got good odds of survival if things are in your favor number two they developed the tactic of hit and run, not standing and fighting pitched battles, which is the way that the American army preferred to operate. No, for the Plains Indians, it would be hit, attack, get away very quickly. Different to the settlers, different ideas. Thirdly, only some of the warrior brotherhoods that I mentioned in the previous video only some of them would attack, not all of them. Why would that be? Why would they save some of the warriors? Any ideas? Well done, if you said the survival of the tribe. Now, minutes or so ago, I said they didn't want to kill people unnecessarily, but they wanted to show their bravery. So, if you like, they invented a game, a bit like when you were younger and in primary school and you'd all run around in the playground. Even I did it when I was younger, about 200 years ago, and we used to call it TIG, running around and touching each other. The Indians had exactly the same idea. They called it counting coup, and it worked like this. They would raid a different tribe. And they'd have a short stick, a little bit like we have a ruler today. And they would go up and try to touch, get within arm's length, touch their enemy, witnessed by one of their own group, and then get away without being attacked or kidnapped or caught. Counting coup, touching the enemy and escaping. This was considered the highest level of bravery. And you got a special feather as a symbol. And everyone would recognize the feather and say you've counted coup once, twice, three times. You are a brave warrior, respect. And it allowed them to gain respect and show bravery, but without threatening the tribe's survival. The final thing in the attitude to war, scalping the enemy, quite controversial. Now, Plains Indians had a belief when they died, they went to a version of heaven, sometimes referred to as the happy hunting ground, but they believed if you killed your enemy, your enemy would go to the happy hunting ground and be waiting for you when you got there. Not necessarily a good idea, but they had the belief, certain tribes had the belief that if you scalped your enemy, then the enemy was not allowed into the happy hunting ground. So if you, when you died and you're not scalped, you're in the happy hunting ground, your enemy isn't. So that's one of the reasons why they did it. But again, it was seen by the white settlers as savage and barbaric and led to a disconnect between the two groups of people. Differences. Conflict. So that's the first half. They're the beliefs of the Plains Indians. 
What about survival? Well, I've already hinted in previous videos that it was very difficult to live and survive and thrive on the Great Plains. Remember, the settlers referred to it as the Great American Desert. Not sandy, like the Sahara Desert, but it was still tough to survive. Why? Very, very hot summers. Dry, very, very cold winters. Snow, frost, ice. So, how did the Plains Indians survive? Well, let's have a think. What do we really need, us today, what do we really need, not want, like computers, playstations, whatever, what do we need the basics to survive? Have a think. Any ideas? Well, I can give us three. Number one. Food and drink. Food and water. They are essential for us to survive as human beings. Number two. Oh, dearie me. Oh, gosh, it's cold. Oh, dearie me, it's very, very cold. Well, I will need to keep warm. How do I keep warm? Putting on extra clothes and shelter. I'm in my house, sheltered. So that's your second one, shelter, keeping warm. Oh, it's so cold, I'm going to turn the central heating up. What if you haven't got central heating? So we've got food, we've got shelter, and the third one, clothes. They are the three basics that we need to survive. Now then, on the Great Plains, what are the Plains Indians going to do to get those three things? We've got a whole range of foods that we can either grow or we can import, bring in from the rest of the world. For our food, they didn't have that. Shelter. We've got houses, flats, bungalows. We've got materials, brick, stone, wood, glass. We tend to live in houses. One of my favourite bands, an old band called Madness. Our house in the middle of a street. Our house. Well, the Plains Indians didn't have houses. Why not? To coin a phrase, it would be madness for them to have houses as we'll see, as I'll explain. Clothes. I'm here, I've got a cotton top, leather, wool, denim, all sorts of materials for our clothes, not available for the Plains Indians on the Great Plains. So what are they going to use? How are they going to survive? They faced a shortage of materials. For example, there's not that many trees, so they can't use wood either to build their houses or to burn for, for fuel to keep warm. They have got a problem. What they can do is use what's available to them. They have to adapt to survive. And the answer, ladies and gentlemen, two animals. Animal number one, the horse brought to America by the Spanish people when they sailed across. The horse made life far, far easier for the tribes on the Great Plains. Why? Any ideas? Bonus points if you've thought of these. It made life easier because number one, quicker to travel. Two, they can transport and carry more stuff using the horses. Three, they can use it for warfare. Four, they can use it for hunting. It allowed much more movement and it allowed the Plains Indians to have their, what we call a nomadic lifestyle. Nomadic means moving from place to place, not staying in a permanent place with a house, not for them. 
So the horse was important. Reminds me of that old joke, ladies and gentlemen. What did the horse say when it fell? I don't know. What did the horse say when it fell? Oh no, I've fallen and I can't giddy up. <laughs> Sorry, terrible joke, won't be repeated. Awful. So the horse, vitally important, despite the silly joke. And the horse is linked very closely to animal number two, the buffalo, or sometimes known as the bison. Herds of buffalo, hundreds of thousands roaming across the Great Plains. They move, they wander, they, they migrate following the food, eating the, the great, great Plains, the grasslands, and then moving on. So if they are moving, so did the Plains Indians. It was vital that the Plains Indians followed the buffalo and the bison to survive because they used all parts of the buffalo stroke bison. What did they do? Well, here's some key examples. There are loads and loads of others. Well, here's a few. They could use the hide or the skin to make clothes clothes one of the basics they could use the hide or the skin to make teepee covers the teepees what they lived in their shelters a little bit like tents which are easy to take down and move quickly with the horse pulling it on a trailer as we'll see so they can use that for the shelter and the clothing they could use the buffalo dung for fuel, a bit smelly, but it will keep them warm in the very, very cold winters. Remember, there's not enough wood to burn because there aren't that many trees. Buffalo dung is the fuel. They would use the tongue for the hairbrush. Crazy, but it worked. So they can get all the essentials from the buffalo or the bison. They can also get toys for their children. For example, the ribs made sledges for the children during the winter. The skulls they would paint and use in their religious ceremonies or rituals for their beliefs. The buffalo dance before the buffalo hunts, which was vital for the Plains Indians, the medicine man would do a buffalo dance to their spirit for a successful hunt, linking back to beliefs. The only bit that they wouldn't use was the buffalo heart. And they would leave that on the Great Plains or sometimes bury it on the Great Plains as a thank you to the Great Spirit for sending the buffalo or bison because that is ensuring their survival. When they hunted though, they would only take a certain amount of buffalo. They wouldn't slaughter the whole herd because that's ridiculous. They didn't have fridges or freezers, so they would just take what they wanted. The idea of respecting and living with nature again, linking together their way of life with their beliefs. Men did the hunting. Women did everything else. They would cut up the buffalo. They would erect drying racks to dry the meat and turn it into what they called pemmican by adding berries and fat. And it meant that the meat would last for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Very sensible if you haven't got a fridge. So it could last into winter when it was more difficult to find the buffalo. So the buffalo or the bison was vital for the Plains Indian survival. Now, just before we finish, one final joke, I know, sorry. What did the buffalo mom and dad say when their lad was leaving home? Any ideas? They said, bye son. <laughs> Terrible. That's the last joke in this video. You'll be pleased to hear. Quick recap. The Plains Indians survived and relied on the herds of buffalo or bison. Great. That's all good. Their way of life has adapted. They can survive. But there's a possible weakness. They relied for everything on the buffalo. Well, what if the buffalo herds are reduced or almost wiped out? Hmm, that's a danger.
we'll come to that in the future so there we have it the first few videos we've looked at the way of life of the plains indians now it's time to move on i'm going to start looking at the impact that the united states government had on the plains indians with some of the laws that they passed some of the decisions that they took regarding the settlers and the great plains that's coming next I hope it's been useful, as ever. Take care. See you soon. Bye now.